Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where today we're here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach where we're going to be walking to the top of the UK's tallest roller coaster, the big one. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. So on this walk we're going to be going to the top of the lift hill and on a lower down section as well. Oh, I'm really excited for it and we're going to get some absolutely fantastic views from up there. I remember doing Walk the Big One when they first started it over 10 years ago but Charlotte's never done it before. Oh, I cannot wait to see the views from up the top. It's going to be fantastic. It's quite a nice evening for it as well. The sun's shining here in Blackpool July 2023. It is quite windy and we're going to feel that up there, I think. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to feel like being up the top. Oh, well, you got to think when you're on the ride, you obviously move up the lift yeah, pretty fast do. and you're down the drop before you know it. When you're walking, you have a lot more time to take it all in as well. But yeah, it's Walk the Big One Exile that we're doing tonight. Of course, an experience that you can pay for on the Pleasure Beach website. And yeah, they also do Walk the Woody, um, which is on the Big Dipper. And we were lucky enough to do that a couple of months ago and that was fantastic, wasn't oh, we it? we absolutely loved that. It was a fantastic tour around. Yeah, so we've come back and we're doing Walk the Big One XL. Let's go and get kitted up. And of course, we can take you along with the GoPro as well, which is going to be awesome. And here we are standing right at the bottom of the big one here at Pleasure Beach. And of course, this iconic ride opened in 1994 as the tallest and fastest roller coaster anywhere in the world. And yet, it's still the tallest roller coaster in the UK. However, it's going to be losing its record next year, of course, to the brand new coaster down at Thorpe Park. So it's great to be doing this walk whilst it's still the tallest here in the UK. And here it comes down the first drop just here. It's a completely different game when you're walking up this. Really excited. And yeah, the actual height, 213 foot tall, and of course above sea level, 235 feet. But yeah, we're making our way now into the park. You actually come round to the side gates here, right next door to the Boulevard and Big Blue Hotel, where we'll watch the briefing and then start our climb. And the good old big one, as I'm sure you all know, opened in 1994, which was um, the year of the roller coaster um, in the UK. But for a very short period of time, it was actually the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world and it still stands as the tallest roller coaster in the UK for another year <laughs> um, at least. Um, so there you go. Uh, we've been doing quite a lot of work on the ride though, certainly over the last few um, winters, um, which if you visit us regularly you'll be aware of, and um, we've been doing a hell of a lot of retracking. So if you have a, a glance out there you can see one of the nice newish pieces of track. You can always spot the new track because it's bright red and shiny, um, but also because of the look of it is slightly different um, to the, um, the traditional track. Um, and by that, what I mean is the cow horn um, parts on are actually a lot closer together. Um, and you can, when you look at some of the older track, particularly if you look at the Helix, for example, you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, and we've done that uh, basically for longevity. Because of the length of the coaster, nearly um, a mile in length, um, this isn't like Alton where they can just do Nemesis in one year. We've chosen to do it by doing it part at a time each winter. Obviously we have a three month close period uh, during the winter. We've been averaging um, about 100 metres um, each, uh, each winter. I think this winter is actually going to be, we are doing another section, there's going to be a slightly shorter um, section. Um, so that we're going to carry on doing this. This isn't actually a new thing though um, for us, although it is about longevity of the ride. The ride in its first couple of years actually did have a considerable retract. The whole of the first drop was retracked, um, and also the whole of the teardrop turnaround above the Grand National was also retracked. And when you go near that later, if you have a look under the sort of white lattice work um, structure part, you can actually see the old footers where the track used to sit. Um, and basically they made it much more of a teardrop shape um, and a much tighter turn than it was previously. It's one of the bit areas that gives us a problem. Building a big coaster right on the seafront is usually not a brilliant idea because of the weather conditions and the, and the wind really does affect um, the ride. Um, and that's why when we're operating the ride, if you've ever been here and it's shut and you can be stood in the park and it can feel like there's no wind at all, um, but obviously we're measuring it from the top, we're also measuring it with an anemometer over on um, the ice blast as well, um, and we're looking at wind speed and direction. Northwesterly winds are the worst for us, and that's what we're watching out for. But in theory, because the, um, like most coasters, it's gravity driven. Once it leaves the top of the hill, it's free rolling, um, and it, we can't stop it again until it gets to the block brake section, which you'll be familiar with a little bit later um, during the ride. However, between leaving the top of the hill and getting to that point, 
if the wind is blowing um, fast enough in a certain direction, it can slow the train sufficiently that ultimately the train would rock back and forth if it didn't make the next hill and end up at one of the lowest um, the points. And we have to plan for that. How we operate the ride, obviously, tries to minimise the chances of that happening. But in the event that did happen and we had to go and get people off, then we've got purpose-built platforms um, to make it nice and easy for us. And you're going to benefit from those purpose-built platforms this evening because you'll get to go and stand um, on some of them, which um, you wouldn't obviously normally um, get to do. Uh, but it's been operating, including abseiling off it, and you'll get to see where that platform is. We haven't done that for a few years, but the turtles abseiled off it. As, um, mm -hmm. We did an annual thing for... Um, help the heroes um, off of that and we've, we've even had this little um, F1 car on its own based on one chasse car train <laughs> chassis go round and you can watch it on YouTube if you if you find it and, um, and it's amazing actually how slow it goes around with this, uh, this guy sat in it but it does make it um, and the car itself is the one that's in the station um, on the Grand Prix um, ride so that was a um, a, a cool thing um, as well. Um, okay, so how this is going to work this evening, um, if you've done walk the big one before, you get that bit, but that's at the end of the experience, okay? Um, but what we're gonna do is take you to a number of different points around the ride. Each one will get higher as we go on, um, and hopefully we'll be able to give you some insight show you some aspects of the ride that you would never normally get to see obviously i said you know unless the ride uh, breaks down for whatever reason and so on you're probably not going to get on some of these platforms um, otherwise and here we go then so we've had our safety briefing you just saw some highlights there from andy highgate the operations manager here at pleasure beach and here's Charlotte all kitted up. All kitted up, I'm ready to go. Yeah, you got the pet salon just there. I have indeed. <laughs> you got your helmet on. We're gonna start quite low. And here we go, we're actually starting off here by the station, just on the brake run. And yeah, the train's actually parked here so we can see it up close. Down here at the sides, yeah, we're all clipped on just here, next to the track itself. <laughs> you like that, Charlotte? <laughs> Down the side of the trains, yeah, starting off low. Because we're making our way up the lift hill later on. I'm excited, I can't wait. It's all going to be a good view. <laughs> yeah, to go with some force over these. There we go. Up close and personal to the track. Of course, never done this before. Yeah, when I did walk the big one over 10 years ago, when they first started it, it was just a lift hill. So it's great getting to do walk the big one XL. <laughs> Mine's the same. I'm stuck. There we go. <laughs> Over that way. I find it easier if you hold it left a little bit actually. There we go. That's it, it's more angled off to the left. That's it. And of course you've got the brake run. It's south just here. And also just so you can obviously see a little bit of the um, the brake run. This is what's called safety brake. We've been past ready brake where the other train was. Remember this is on the days when we used to be able to run three trains. So it is set up. Um, in that way to accommodate that. Um, if you're wondering what all the numbers down the track are, that's what we use actually to measure um, the speed um, and how far the, the train is coming into the brakes um, when we're doing the test runs um, in the morning um, or after we've, we've reopened after a stoppage. You'll get to see those in a number of other locations of the block brake um, a little bit later um, on as well. Um, we've also obviously got our, our brakes are in the uh, permanently in the, the closed position um, with um, uh, air powered um, the brakes through a compressor. Um, and um, you can also see a bit of new track which is down there. If you've been on the ride in the before that, you might remember it used to um, push you to one side as you went through the tunnel. Um, and again, part of that retracking process has been everything's advanced a lot in 25 years is to take some of that out of it and so now it's a much smoother um, ride as you come through um, the station itself is quite interesting um, because um, it was designed um, by Amanda Thompson's sister Fiona who's an architect by trade but uh, what's unusual about it is it's tall and thin with a very small footprint uh, obviously we're pressured for space in the park on a typical ride when you've got uh, multiple trains say for example on icon in our uh, maintenance bay we can actually line all the trains up in a row in the maintenance bay and in the station whereas here it's actually all stacked on top of each other so you have 
the station track where you get in and out then below that you've got a maintenance bay um, and then below that again you've got what's called the pit so the reason it's so tall is because if you were going to bring a train up from the pit right at the bottom and it's all done on what's called a D-mag which is basically an elevator on cables that brings the whole track section up with the train on it to be in line with the running track that's how you introduce new trains onto the system or put them back down into the maintenance bay but obviously if you're bringing something up from the bottom you need the running track from the station to be able to go somewhere and it goes right up it towards the top of the station so that's why the station is such a unusual design um, we do actually have that on, a, on another ride though in the park does anyone know where that one would be it's not the same manufacturer it's uh, avalanche has a vertical stacking system um, as well for its trains in the station um, which is weird because avalanche is mac and then Icon is Mac and then we didn't go for it um, in, in that particular instance so um, so there you go all right well you're all getting quite good practice of this so let's uh, we'll head back around there and then we'll go a little bit higher um, and this is one of the prime bits being as it's going into that big turnaround or out of that big turnaround um, and so in theory the train would just rock back and forth it's not in theory it has actually happened a couple of times <laughs> um, and we would come up and get um, everyone it's very straightforward for the guests actually they just need to step out using that pedal that I showed you before and walk down the more complicated bit is getting the train back to the station which in this location involves closing the prom a crane craning each section of the train off one section at a time the train weighs about seven tons in total um, and so it's not a straightforward thing. So that's why when we're operating, we monitor the wind so closely because mm -hmm. we want to avoid uh, obviously from happening. But anyway, so very few people have actually been up on uh, these platforms. So this one has quite a nice view of the ocean as well, which is why we mm -hmm. picked it. So let's get in there. Here we go. <laughs> and yeah, to get to this point, we've actually come out of the park through the little side gate. Making our way up. Oh, look at this. Fantastic, just to be able to appreciate this view. Oh. <laughs> this is always the fun bit. <laughs> there we go. Find it easy if you hold it to the right a little bit. There you go. And over the top. Whew. Wow, look at this. Whew. What a view. And then also you can see your classic roller coaster style track with the cow horn supports, but you can see the main running rail on the top where the wheels go, but you've also got wheels on the inside and we're up stop wheels on the underneath as well. So the train is effectively clamped onto the track uh, whilst it's going round as well. Oh, fantastic just to see, not just the park, but also across Blackpool seafront from here. And yeah, great view looking into Pleasure Beach as well, the River Cave show building just over there. And yeah, this huge space here at this side of the park. You don't realise actually until you come up on here how much room there actually is here where this car park is for potential future developments, of course. And a great view of the Big Dipper just over there as well, freshly repainted for its 100th birthday this year. Oh, some fantastic views there so far. How are you finding it, Charlotte? Oh, I'm really enjoying it. Are you ready for a big walk soon? I'm worried going all the way to the So yeah, walking in the part of the park now where, of course, you don't normally get to come. This is off limits. Some good views of infusion just there. We should make our way to our next point. Here on Walk the Big One, XL. And here's walking down the track here of the Pleasure Beach Express. You also get some great views of the Big Dipper, of course, freshly repainted here on the left. And yeah, check out our vlog from Walk the Woody that we did a couple of months ago. Another fantastic experience that they offer here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. We're making our way to our next location just here now, of course. The mid-course break run. And yeah, really close to Big Dipper, just over here too. We're going up the block break. In a moment, you'll have a new appreciation for the block break. Because when you're on the ride, you think, right, it's right at the end of the ride. It's not very high up, blah, blah, blah. Well, just see what you think of in about five minutes. So <laughs> oh, here we go. I thought <laughs> you go through. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Yeah, at the side. <laughs>
<laughs> you ready for this, Charlotte? Yes. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> nice and close to Icon. We'll get a great view of Icon from here, actually. Do you want to stop yet, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this, making our way up. A fantastic view of Icon from here. The S Bend just there, that is fantastic. Never seen before from this angle. We're climbing up to the mid course. Fab view of Dipper. And of course, the big blue hotel over here too. Hey, people in the windows, hey! <laughs> Give them a wave. Oh, look at this, and steeplechase as well. It looks amazing from here. It is, you don't realise, do you, how high this is? Like Andy just said, near the end of the ride, you don't realise how tall this is just here. Oh, <laughs> almost, Charlotte. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Wow. What a view from here already. Whew. And here we go, we've made it up. Wow, look at this. Quite a long way down from here, even. Ooh, how do you find that? <laughs> Gotta say, Icon looks amazing from this angle. Look at all the twists and turns just over there. You really get to appreciate Icon even more from up here, and you, obviously you don't see it for very long when you're passing here and you're on the ride. The view down there, the Big Dipper, and of course. Steeple chase there with its three tracks as well. Another Arrow Classic. Same manufacturer, of course, as the big one. What a view that is. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Really makes you appreciate how Pleasure Beach fit all the rides into each other. And wow. Then we can release the brakes and it will, from a, a standing stop, it will make it back to the station. Although we will have our finger over the button to try and catch it in the brakes just in case at the end. But, um, but it will make it back from, um, from here, okay? You can see they're actually taller than the Revolution um, and so on. So when you're on the ride, you, you kind of come flying through here and don't really think anything of it. But hopefully now realise that it's a little bit, uh, a little bit taller than you thought it was. All right, well, we've got one more location to go to. I can't guess what that is, so uh, let's uh, head back down that way, guys. There we go. To the big ones, Lift Hill. Oh, and here we go, making our way down now from the mid-course brake run. What a view, that. Absolutely fantastic. It really is. Some bits just here. We're making our way down, of course, over to that final location. The main event itself, the walk, oh, the big ones, Lift Hill, the tallest roller coaster in the UK, for now. Yeah, there we go, 420 steps. Who's going first? Oh, no. There we go. <laughs> Let the climb begin. Oh, and there's a look at the chain, close and personal, as we let the climb begin. Up oh, the big one. Really looking forward to this. How are you feeling, Charlotte? Oh, this is all good. <laughs> And of course, as you may have noticed, if you've rode the big one, like I'm sure many of you have, you've got the little height markers at the side. And we're going to stop every 50 feet when we're walking up just here. And we'll get some fantastic views. And then, yeah, we'll get the views coming back down again. Look at how thick the chain is just there. It's just a word, it is, yeah. <laughs> Let's try and get some force. There you go. That's it. Already the views are awesome. Bear in mind, last time I did this, Icon wasn't here. Over 10 years ago, first ever group. And I always remember it was raining, it was windy, it was the illuminations were on, it was at night. So yeah, it's nice to do this in the daytime. And of course now Icon's in. Get a fantastic view. of the double launch coaster. And of course opened in 2018. Woo. Here we are at the 50 feet mark. 50. Hey. Woo! <laughs> Charlotte, you still alive? <laughs> and there's the 50 foot marker. Yeah, we've had a couple of minutes just stop there, and of course, Andy's giving us some more information. Very informative coming on these, which is great. You get to learn lots of different things that you may or may not know about the Pleasure Beach. Of course, we try and share as many of those in our vlogs anyway. However, you always would come on something like this and learn even more about the park, which is fantastic. And yeah, Icon looks amazing from here. Of course, we can see the top hat from here. And yeah, I love the interaction between all the rides here, but especially the big one and Icon. Look at the top hat. Fantastic from here. And yeah, even better, of course, when 
both rides are running and yeah you can be on the big one just here and have that interaction with the train coming over the top part which is always brilliant Whew. if i sound a bit of out, out of breath it's because i am <laughs> you getting on the right charlotte yeah, it's just like it is <laughs> that's the fun bit wow yeah and like when they put icon in the 2018 it's kind of like the big one was always designed to have a coaster running through it here obviously it wasn't back in 94 but like this is brilliant here yeah there's a fantastic view of the top hat i just love how close it gets literally within meters feels even closer than that when you're on the ride and you've got your arms in the air and you come up into this near miss just here which is pretty epic and we keep on climbing here on the big one and great views out to the left as well of course the inversion down there on icon steeplechase you can see where we were earlier on so it's getting a bit windier now so i do apologize here on the gopro if you hear a lot of wind noise Whew. and yeah this is the point where if you are scared of heights you start to think oh we're very out in the open here as you approach the 150 feet mark worth pointing out if you are doing one of these here at pleasure beach you can bring two spectators free of charge you can see some of the spectators down there at the bottom with some of the people who are here on our group so yeah that's a really nice thing that they do Oh, look at Icon from here. Looking down there into the tunnel. Beautiful. It's quite a nice night for it. Would have been better if the sun was shining, maybe a sunset, but you know what? I'll take this. It's better than too windy. And of course, rain. Woo, what a view. Still getting all right there, Charlotte? Yeah. That's good. Getting high now. <laughs> That's the thing, because you've got to get these over the carabiner. You're kind of looking through the gap down there thinking oh look how high we are Woo. Oh. wow we're at 150 feet Whoa. Hey, 150 as tall as the ice blast 180 feet um you can see the tower which is twice the height of the big one wow looking beyond that to the north those mountain looking hills is actually the edge of the lake district and then if you come back the other way and look down across Tibbons and um, I'm not too sure if you hear what Andy said just but yeah, you can see Southport over there in the distance that way and the Lake District of course in this direction with the mountains just over there as we keep on climbing it's not keep on riding it's keep on climbing tonight here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach walk the big one XL it's not too windy but yeah of course you can feel the structure swaying a little bit as it's perfectly designed to do and yeah you actually get to appreciate the view even more when you're heading back down from this too and yeah big dipper that is looking awesome with its repaint look at that you get to appreciate it even more from up here on the big ones left as we approach 200 foot we've been climbing for about i'd say 10 minutes so far including the stops doesn't take as long as you might expect actually Whew. you're getting the hang of the carabiner there now yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's back yeah, like oh. <laughs> that was getting some speed and getting it over there we go Whew. wow and yeah you can see the newly replaced track that's there as well yeah and he did say there's more going to be done this winter probably not as much as the past few winters but the plan is to keep going and close until it's all done Whew. There we go, 200 foot. Final part of the climb now, up to the top of the big one. Wow, look at this. And there you can see all across the park, all the coasters lined up next to each other. Wow, and that's what makes Pleasure Beach so special. It really is the location of this park. And that's what makes Icon such a great ride as well, how they fit it in. I mean, look at them interactions just from up here. And you can see it fit in between all the rides. Hey! <laughs> oh, you do have fun with these as you're coming up. Oh wow! Here we go. Long to the top of the big one, Charlotte. <laughs> wow. Now what you don't realise is look at the height beacon just here, how big it is. Uh, it's massive, you don't realise. There we go. Look at this. Wow, what an amazing view. 
looking out over the ocean, all the way through our Blackpool. This is incredible. Yeah, it's that view. Looking back down at the moment, which is awesome. There's some big Pepsi cans down there at the bottom of the station. Yeah, it's looking at how all the rides are packed in here at Pleasure Beach. And what really makes this park really special, how the fits are in such a small size. And you really appreciate that from up here on the big one. Yeah, of course, you can see that when the ride's operating and you're up here looking out, but you really get to appreciate it more when you're walking up here and you can look across and just see it. Valhalla over there, the big show building that you can see all across the Pleasure Beach from here at the top. Wow. Valhalla looks a bit weird. What do you think, Charlotte? Oh, this is amazing. You can see for miles. <laughs> it's brilliant. Like just to be up here oh, no. like, and stand here and appreciate yeah. it. Of course, one of Europe's tallest just there here. The sign, yeah, the height beacon just there, which is absolutely massive, you don't realise. All this just up here. Right up above the Boulevard Hotel that's down there. Of course, we walked right underneath here earlier on when we started the video. See the mirror ball over there, Southport. And the air just feels so nice and fresh up here as well. So clean. Which is awesome. And of course, there's the start of the drop, just where Andy's standing just over there. Fantastic. And we spent about five minutes or so at the top taking in the view. Yeah, this is the fun bit. Like, you think climbing it would be the scariest. Actually, it's coming back down. You OK there, Charlotte? <laughs> Just taking it really easy. And of course, you can stop whenever you need to coming down. The staff that do this are all really well trained, of course, and walking up here many times every week. This is like a standard procedure. Just looking out over the park. But yeah, this is amazing. I love just kind of standing here and taking it all in, the sheer beauty of Pleasure Beach and just how special this amusement park is. And that's the key, not theme park, amusement park. Not themed areas, just everything, just all mangled in together, but it's really quite special. Yeah, it's great doing this in the daytime. I did it at night at first, and it's great at night, it really is, especially with the illuminations, and I definitely recommend doing it, but I think you get to appreciate the scale in the daytime a lot better. And the park looks awesome now, of course, with Icon down there and the big dipper that's been repainted recently, Valhalla refurbished over there. Yeah, really good to see all these refurbishment projects. It keeps the park looking really fresh. Skyforce just down there too. And yeah, you can see how they park it on an evening, not on the ground. It's kind of lifted up a little bit. Whew. What an experience though, coming to do this. I would definitely recommend it. And of course, if you head onto the Pleasure Beach website, you can see the different experiences that they offer. You can also just do Walk the Big One if you didn't want to do the other parts that we did here today, which I would definitely recommend for the full experience. But if you just wanted to walk up the lift itself, and of course it's a little bit cheaper as well, then yeah, you can do just Walk the Big One where you come straight up the main lift hill. But especially if you're a little bit scared of heights, and even if you're not scared of heights, but not sure how you're going to deal with walking up something like this, I'd recommend Walk the Big One XL because that means it kind of gives you a bit of a taster of the height with the lower sections. And I thought we'd just go to maybe one section low down, but now we went to three before coming up here. So yeah, four experiences all in one. Hence the name, Walk the Big One XL. I think for me, what makes it special, of course, with my love for Icon, of course, the big one is a special ride. It really is. And it changed the UK theme park industry. However, with my love for Icon, it would be my favorite UK coaster. It's so nice just coming up here and seeing that from a different angle it really is and just getting to appreciate its beauty and of course a lot of people always say oh sean you know how can we love icon so much it's not just the ride experience it's the location what really makes it special and you really get to appreciate that from up here it's the design of it and how they fit it all into the park look at this having a casual talk as they're walking down the big one the tallest coaster in the uk and this year not next year so i'm not going to be able to say that so it's nice to do this now and back here now at the 100 foot marker over halfway down what a fantastic overall experience this has been tonight and the weather stayed nice for us which i'm really pleased about yeah another look an icon's top hat just there too incredible perfect how it just fits through the structure and yeah andy was actually saying i didn't manage to catch it on camera but uh, yeah he was saying how they actually had to when the design process change the position of the top pattern icon just to make sure they had enough room for the launch down there and of course the clearance with the chain return here on the big one because obviously you've got the chain itself coming up here but yeah it loops around 
from the chain return you can just kind of see that just down the bottom through the gap there Whew. and yeah you also get to appreciate the big one station as well when you look at that from up here and how that was designed of course to fit into such a tight space without affecting other attractions here at the park and here we go nearly back down now it's on the lift hill it's on the final few steps just here back near the pepsi cans that 10 minutes ago felt so far away <laughs> and yeah we're now back down by them of course the train parks up there just outside the station absolutely brilliant that was what an experience with some epic views of the park well done charlotte you did it hey <laughs> oh i am roasting hot though now after that i wish i didn't have my jumper on <laughs> brilliant well that was an absolutely fantastic experience and of course we'll talk more about it in just a moment when we head out of the park yeah you do actually get this exclusive pin badge walk the big one xl and yeah that's of course included in your walk and if you want to you can also purchase exclusive merchandise as you can see just here as well which is the t-shirt that they've got there and also the jacket just over here there you go i love the jacket yeah we got a jackets there as well 34.95 so yeah good price and then they're actually embroidered just on the side there as well as you can see it says i walked the big one fantastic yeah the t-shirts they're 12 95 so yeah really good prices of course yeah you can get the g ladies here as well fantastic i'm not too sure on the price for that one is it on there i can't see it is it, is it there no i don't think it is but i'll find out oh it's on this one there we go i'm looking at that one there we go 34.95 well, that was an absolutely incredible experience. Walk the Big One XL at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And yeah, what a fantastic time we had doing that oh, there. that was absolutely brilliant. Andy and the team do such a good job. And we went to more locations than we thought. We actually went to four locations on the ride, which was fantastic. Yeah, I thought that was great. So, of course, it's perfect as well because you want to build up a little bit um, to see if you're scared of heights or not because you don't know until you're walking up something like that. It's pretty tall up there, over 200 feet. And yeah, we started off by heading up to the final brake run. And that was good, wasn't it, on there? Yeah, even that felt quite high like seeing the train parked up on the brake was great yeah that was fantastic and just getting to look up at the lift on and that's where we're going soon uh, then of course we walked down from there made our way over to the viewpoint over here at the side towards the turnaround and yeah went up quite a few steps there but that was a great view because we got really close to the track you kind of see up into the uh, turnaround section and also the sections after the first drop as well yeah, there. so bear in mind if you are doing this experience there is so many steps so keep that in mind yeah of course it's about double i'd say than if you're just doing the normal walk the big one uh, because you go up to these other places as well then we made our way up to the highest point so far um, which was the mid course brake run we call it the mid course but actually it's towards the end of the ride i did not realize how high that was charlotte you don't realize when you're actually on the platform how high you are you're actually higher than revolution which i can't believe yeah like you looked across there and that was where you got some amazing views of the big one along with that steeplechase and also icon as well and then of course we made our way to the main event itself over 400 steps up and the same again back down uh, which is crazy uh, walking up the lift hill of the big one still the tallest coaster in the uk here as of 2023 and uh, yeah that experience like i said i did it over 10 years ago uh, the weather conditions were really poor so it was nice to do it today uh, where there was only a little bit of wind there was no rain it was nice and clear we could see uh, of course over towards southport in that direction we could see over towards the lake district in that direction and it was just a brilliant experience we wasn't had it? like the perfect weather for that because like sean said you don't want it to be really windy because then you'd be blowing about but with that i actually found it really scary walking down because you're seeing the full perspective of it. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. You'd think going up would be the scary I bit, know. but really you're just looking at the rail at the side, the track on the right, and then up to the sky. Uh, it's more when you get to the top and turn around and you look really at the like steps it. and think, blimey, you know, we're a long way up just here. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, you've got the carabiner, which is quite hard to manoeuvre. <laughs> um, of course, you get a lot of practice. Uh, you've got the staff on hand that are all fully trained. They all know what they're doing and they'll help you out. Uh, it's one of them, though. If you need to stop anywhere, they say you stop every 50 feet, but, um, you know, if you need to stop, you'll be able to stop uh, and let you catch your breath, wouldn't That's you? Well. a lot of people it could be quite hard for people to climb up so you can stop and just take it all in yeah definitely but uh, overall it's a brilliant experience i definitely recommend it 
Uh, it's actually took us over two hours to do that full experience, but you get to learn lots of facts along the way. Of course, we know a lot about the parks, especially Pleasure Beach, with it being one of the parks we visit so much. However, even we learned some things there, which is fantastic, didn't we, on the way? I just think it's so nice that they give you like the facts along the way. It's just brilliant. Yeah, and with Andy doing the tour there as well, of course, head of operations, is an enthusiast himself. Uh, he knows a lot of facts, and yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, he'll always answer any of your questions along the way, tell you different things, and yeah, we really enjoyed it. So yeah, thank you so much to Pleasure Beach for having us down here to come and experience it. And of course, check out uh, Walk the Woody that we did a couple of months ago on the Big Dipper. We had a fantastic time doing that as well. Oh, that was absolutely great. All the experiences that they do are just so good. Yeah, really good and something a little bit different as well. We've got the Behind the Onion event coming up soon to celebrate 100 years of the Big Dipper. So stay tuned for that. And a full part vlog from Pleasure Beach on the way in the next few days as well. Uh, but what a brilliant experience climbing up the big one. There it is behind us. And you can say you've walked to the top oh, now, so Charlotte. Oh, exciting to know that I've done that. Absolutely brilliant. We've got loads of photos and videos and documented it all for you here to see as well but so uh, there we go here from Blackpool Pleasure Beach that leaves us with one final thing to say get, get out there, there and keep, keep on, on riding. riding see you in the next vlog